Hey guys, welcome back. So today we want to do another installment of Modern Collectibles. In this series of videos, we talk about firearms that are potentially very collectible down the road. These are firearms that either limited numbers were produced of or are no longer in production or certain configurations are no longer in production. And so we've picked three guns that we've identified as modern collectibles for today's video. But first, if you guys enjoy the content that we produce here at the Military Arms channel, we are viewer supported. So if you'd like to visit our Patreon page, there's a link down below. You'll get early access to videos like this one. You'll have direct access to me. I answer all private communications and we have some other perks as well. Again, there's a link down below to Patreon. Also, if you enjoy the content here at the Military Arms channel, please just take a moment to hit that like, share and subscribe button click that notification bell. With all that being said, let's get started with today's video and talk about three modern collectible firearms. If you're a guy, wearing a wedding band is something that you may not like to do. I know metallic bands drove me nuts. Uh, sometimes if you work in construction or if you work around electronic devices, things like that, certain uh, vocations, you're not going to want a metallic ring. I just don't like them because they're not comfortable. If you go back in my video library a year plus ago, you're going to see that I'm wearing a green or sometimes black wedding band and that is a Groove Life ring. It's a synthetic ring that stretches and you can get it in different colors and patterns and things like that. You can also have them engraved. This one has Mac on it, but this is not metallic. It fits very comfortably over your ring finger. And when your fingers swell and contract in size as they will do throughout the year, it's not really gonna be affected by uh, the Groove ring. You can easily take it off or put it back on and it's very comfortable, so comfortable, you kind of forget it's there. And that's why I like these Groove rings. But more recently, they introduced another product, and that's the Groove Life belt. It is a belt that's very thin, very comfortable, but what makes this a little bit different than other belts on the market is the buckle system. So this buckle has a magnet in it. You can see the magnet by my index finger there. So you'll fish this through your belt loops. When it comes to the front, you'll simply put the two halves together. The, the, the magnet will draw them together and it'll clasp. And then when you pull on it, it kind of locks that buckle into place. To release it, you just push forward and pull out and the buckle comes off. Very, very easy to use. Both the ring and the belt have a lifetime no BS warranty. So if the ring goes bad, you break it, cut it, whatever. The belt, you have a problem with it, send it back to the groove. They'll send you a brand new one, no questions asked. You can check them out at the link in the video description below. The Galil Ace has been coming in from Israel for a number of years, both as a pistol and as a rifle. But towards the end of the Gen 1's life cycle, there's now a Gen 2, IWI started importing a bunch of different little oddball guns in various calibers. One of them was a 545 by 39 We've talked about that here in the past, and that's a caliber that's going to continue on into the Gen 2's, but they did a limited run of Gen 1 firearms. And another one, that really is of interest to me is the 5.56 guns. Now, again, these are a limited production item. This one has an eight inch barrel Gen 1 configuration, has a side folding brace on it. We'll talk more about that here in a minute. But on top of it, I might as well point out as well, this is one of the new primary arms prism sights. This one's a one power, very tiny. I'm putting these on all sorts of firearms. They just are really, really nice prism sights, but we'll talk more about those in a dedicated video. But this gun has all the features of the Gen 1 guns, has that short barrel, it's chambered at 5.56, but what makes it really cool is it uses new production Galil magazines. Now, when we did the video on this gun originally, we talked about these magazines working in the original Galil rifles. And so these are brand new production and it's a rock and lock 5.56, just like the original Galils were. But this one has the added functionality of the Ace, which includes a last round bolt hold open. You can drop the magazine out, put a fresh magazine in, reach up here and hit the release with your index finger and chamber a new round. So this is definitely one of those modern collectibles that's really, really cool. A Gen 1 configuration, rock and lock, 5.56 gun. Just extremely cool. Now, my partner over at Copper Custom, Dave, he took one of these because he's fascinated with the 5.56 rock and lock guns too and he modernized it. And this gives you an idea of some of the aftermarket support that's available for the ACE firearms, including the Gen 1 guns. Back here, he has a tail hook brace on it. He's replaced the rear trunnion piece with a pick rail, and it's easily done by driving out this roll pin and putting this pick rail back there, putting the pin back in, and then you can put any type of brace or stock that you would like to on the firearm. He's also running the polymer delete kit, which now you can see the magazine is more exposed. Back here, you have an aluminum trigger guard that gives you easy access to the mag release right here. And in my opinion, it actually makes putting the magazine in just a little bit easier as well. It feels more natural for some reason with that polymer delete kit. Out here, we have a Midwest Industries uh, M-Lock rail system on it. 
He has a surefire light with a pressure switch on the side, some mag pull hand stop, and then a suppressor out on the end of the gun with that aim point on top. So you can see how you can configure these even Gen 1 guns into whatever you want. You can totally modernize it and customize it to your tastes. So these are actually available. We still have some of these available at Copper, but once they're gone, they're gone forever. So if you're looking for a modern collectible, check out the Ace series of pistols, either in 545 by 39 or the 556 guns like this one. The Ace 556 Rock and Lock is the most affordable firearm that we're gonna talk about in this video. So now we're going up one tier in cost. And I wanna show you guys the Heinel 556 pistol. Or in the original video, I called it the Heinel. I was corrected in the comment section. It's pronounced Hanel. So I'll try to remember to call it the Hanel in this video. But why is this a modern collectible? Well, a couple of things. First of all, for a very brief moment in time, this was Germany's new service rifle. It had won the military contracts, then H&K got involved. And long story short, this is no longer the German service rifle going forward. So that is of interest to me. But what's also interesting to me, BNT, the importer, not the manufacturer, but BNT out of Switzerland, imported these. And at a trade show, they had mentioned that they would not be bringing these in with the key mod handguards on them. Knowing the US civilian market wants M-Lock, key mod's pretty much dead in the United States. They said that the gun, when it comes into the country, would have M-Lock rails on it. And they were actually showing, I think it was a TFB interview, they were actually showing the key mod on it, but they made a point of saying that's never gonna come into the United States. Well, it did. And all future Hanel pistols that come into the country will have that new M-Lock system on it. They may also make some different changes to the upper and lower receivers, I don't know. But another interesting note is this one has a 15 by one right hand thread on it. Rumor is the new ones coming in with the M-Lock rails will also have a half by 28 thread pitch, making it easier to put a suppressor on it because that 15.1 by right hand thread um, is kind of an oddball in the United States. If you wanna get a 416, this is by far the most affordable option. If you want to get a, you know, a, a clone build based off an original kit, you're talking about at, a, at least a minimum investment of $5,000, and it's just going to go up from there. This bad boy is on the market for right around $2,000. Now, they did drop the price on these collectible versions, the you know, few that were imported with this handguard, so they could make way for the new M-Lock guns coming in. So if they're still available out there, you can actually get them for a really, really good price because I suspect that price is going to go back up when the M-Lock rail handguard versions hit U.S. shores. But overall, the quality and everything on this gun is outstanding. We have an entire video dedicated to it, which I encourage you to go watch. If you're interested in picking up probably one of the highest quality 416 type rifles out there on the market right now. So on the higher end of the price spectrum of firearms that are being imported to the United States that are potentially gonna be modern collectibles are some of the guns coming out of Switzerland and they're being imported by JDI Imports. JDI is bringing in guns that the American market has been craving for a long, long time. Everything from 5.56 to 300 blackout versions of the SIG rifles and pistols that are out there, including the 751P that I'm showing you here. Again, we have an entire video dedicated to this gun, but this is a 308 version of the famous PE90 that so many Americans have fallen in love with, myself included. And this is an example of something that we may or may not see a whole lot of them come in the country, uh, either because they're going to stop making them in Switzerland or the ATF may intervene at some point under the Biden administration and do everything they can to frustrate the importations of guns like this. So this is high on my list of really interesting modern collectibles. Anything that JDI imports is currently bringing into the United States. This thing is a handful. In 308, the 751P is a meat tenderizer. It, it, it has a really pronounced recoil impulse. I mean, when you compare it to something else like a G3 or a semi-automatic version like the PTR-91 or the FAL, those are all pussycats compared to this thing. It just has a really sharp, abrupt recoil impulse but it doesn't change the fact that it's in 308. It is so cool. And so if you're looking to pick up interesting Swiss firearms, you need to look no further than JDI Imports. Uh, now, the offerings continue to fluctuate what he is able to get into the country and some things that just drop off because they're no longer available or he can't get them into the country anymore, usually because, you know, uh, SANS isn't manufacturing the firearms anymore. This one is marked Sig Sauer AG on it, uh, but it has SANS import and then has a JDI serial number on it. So it has JDI CM and then the, the digits that follow. 
So it's a little bit confusing as to who's doing what with regards to a lot of these firearms coming in from JDI, but all you need to know is they're really, they're real Swiss products and they're coming in from a US company. So very, very cool piece. This is something that I want to thank Michiko. Uh, he has a YouTube channel. Uh, William goes by Michiko on YouTube. Check him out. Uh, he made it possible for me to get my hands on this firearm to show you in video. I know Rob Ski has a video out there on it. In our video, we talked about the accuracy of the gun because this is promoted as being a DMR. So if you want to learn more about this firearm, please go back and check in our library the video dedicated to this. As a matter of fact, uh, in the video description below, I'll put links to the videos for each of the guns that we've talked to in today's video regarding modern collectibles. So stuff like this, almost guaranteed to be a highly collectible firearm down the road. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video talking about some more modern collectibles. As we stumble across more, we'll continue the video series. If you enjoy the content that we produce, again, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, you have that little join button right underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button, and you can support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.